Welcome back to another War Thunder replay, uh, replay roundup, sorry. And today, yes, this is going to be the last replay roundup of 2015. Don't worry, guys, there will be some more fresh replays coming in 2016. And I've decided to dedicate a lot more time to doing a lot more War Thunder replays. So if you want to send me a replay, links are in the video description. Plus, I'll put an annotation above my head right here. It's uh, replayroundup at gmail.com. Just put in the header uh, 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 what it is, tank, plane, etc., etc., and that's all you need to do. I will give you all the tips I can and stuff like that from there. And uh, so what we're going to be doing is, um, because in theory I started, uh, believe it or not, this year's uh, replay roundup off with a team DDG replay, I only feel that it's best that I end this year's uh, a replay roundup with a Team DDG replay. And if none of you guys don't know who Team DDG is, that is uh, Dust David Games. He's a big YouTuber here. He's also a personal friend of mine. And I'm just totally amazed, totally blown away by the love and support he's given me and my channel and everything else. Thank you, David. Much love. Merry Christmas to you, my friend. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at his uh, KI, uh, uh, his KI, his Hayabusa Mark II replay real quick so we're gonna hit the root we're gonna hit this view we're gonna let it load or do edit break here okay guys and here we are we're just loading in so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna close these off boom boom we don't want to give anything away and so what we're actually gonna be doing is I'm actually gonna speed the replay up a little bit here so we can actually get to uh, what we're trying to get to and of course there's a bug in the replay where the uh, blue tickets just keep peeling down okay so first things first I'm gonna put it back to regular speed there there marvelous can remember that name marvelous and the ki-43 okay, and there's a reason why I want you to remember that guy's name now uh, friendly uh, p36 has gone down low uh, an F2A. This this is clearly America versus ja Japan. This is Battle of Midway. So there's a Hurricane Mark II and a P26. I don't know what that P shoot is doing here. Two P36s and a Hurricane himself. So David's gone high. Now, I don't know about you, but if you can spot them, then, then you've owned yourself a cookie. You've owned yourself a Cobra cookie. But if you can't spot them, that's fine. But as you can see, the AAA is going off on this poor P-36 who's in the middle of nowhere with the name of You Mad Bro, really. Here's a hint, dude. Take the, take the numbers out your name. Anyway, uh, Marvelous is lining up on that P-36. The way he's coming in, believe it or not, and, and there it is. This is why that KO-43 is slipping in behind him. He's trying to shoehorn that P-36 into that A5M4. But anyway, we're going to be concentrating on David now. Now, David has decided to keep some altitude. Of course, altitude always translates to energy, no matter what you do. As long as you stay high, you've got energy in the bank. I've told you this. Jingles has told you this. So many people have told you this. In fact, I'm actually going to move my webcam real quick right there. So, his first target. Uh, Argomando 94 in a KI-10. Japanese plane that he's flying versus Japanese planes that they own. Now, bear in mind, there's two KI-10s, two biplanes here. At, say, at 14,000 feet, that's pretty scary. Reason being is, it, it and, I'm not, and I'm not saying it's scary for David, it's scary for those biplanes because the Hayabusa excels at high to mid altitude, and it's even greater in low altitude in arcade battles. I'm not really that sure in realistic. I've only flown it a few times in realistic, but these guys are clearly... Uh, Rock Chavez and uh, Argomando 94 are uh, clearly uh, either uh, on team speak or whatnot. You can tell just the way they're flying. Of course, David decides to hey, you ain't going heads up with me, boy. So he takes a couple of pot shots at these guys. Now, of course, they decide to split up. One being the bait, the other one is the switch. Now, of course, David, not having any of that, is keeping his 
keeping his energy in the bank. Now, because those two had to dive, they're now struggling to try and keep up. Now, of course, uh, Rochevez is going to pop off a few shots to try and scare David to nose down. David doesn't take the bait. David stays solid, stays true, keeps his energy in the bank. Smart bloody move. Unless the bullet actually hits you, don't divert course. Stay on course, guys, okay? Now, of course, he's got two friendlies coming in, a Hurricane and a P-36. So those two KI-10s are like, oh, shit, we better get out of here. Oh, wait, we're biplanes. Exactly. You've got no speed unless you dive. And if you dive and excel over, I think it's over 300 miles per hour, snap, snap, goes your wings. So you don't want to be doing that. Now, the Hayabusa, of course, the, re the world record or the known documented record for the speed of a Hayabusa is 405 miles per hour. Now, honestly, I've got mine set for miles per hour, not kilometers. I'm not in Australia or any of that fancy weird countries. I prefer miles per hour. It's just simpler to work out. So, plain and simple, if David dives right now and exceeds 400 miles per hour, he will snap his wings like toothpicks. So, with that knowledge, David's not. He's just put it in a shallow dive. Steadily gaining a little bit of speed. But keeping the energy still stored. See, see, see. Hurricane Mark II did the right thing. But unfortunately, he shouldn't have shot. He should have waited till he slipped in right behind him. And then shot. Not You don't want to try and sideswipe. Because you've got to take in the impact angle to your shot. For example, if target A is moving this way. And you're moving that way. Okay. You now have to fire and take into account his distance and now your angle elevation distance too. And you can't change those gun elevation targeting angles on the fly like you can in a real jet in, by today's standards. So his guns are now in a fixed position from takeoff. So you've now got to ex struggle even harder to get your nose around and that's not what you want to do. Remember, simplicity is its finest form, okay? So, as you can see, Hurricane's firing off a couple more shots. Guys, 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 come on. One word. One word. One word. Stealth hammer. Stealth hammer. Okay? Stealth, because you don't want the phosphorus trails given. See, and there goes that P-36A. He tried to do the right thing. He's on fire. He's going to go. He's burnt. Good kill, KI-10. Now, KI-10 immediately barrel rolls left. A uh, barrel roll, rolls right, sorry. But doesn't engage his flaps. Because the KI-10 doesn't have any. So... They excel at turning, but not stopping. Bear that in mind. So the KI-10s are now decided to go after the more dangerous threat, which is the Hurricane Mark II. David puts this thing in a shallow arc, takes a minor hit, does barely any damage to the outer, outer structure of the plane. Remember, can't exit. Remember, guys, he cannot exceed 400 miles per hour. 405 is the max. Okay, 350. He's getting there getting it no 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 slight turn elevation again he's gonna try and arc it try to bleed off a little bit of speed but still keep the energy there we go there we go now oh shit that's another ki 43 anything you can do i can do better remember that guys if the opponent behind you is the same plane as you it's not about the plane anymore it's about the pilot bear that in mind okay so Enemy KI-43 Mark II. Notice he's not shooting. He's not firing. Is he trying... What's going on? Is he out of ammo? David doesn't know. Okay, David doesn't know. I, I, I wouldn't know either. Because if I was that KI-43 player, I would at least fire a couple of bursts for ranging. Uh, uh, under 200 meters away? Oh, definitely. Unless his gun sights are targeted for, say, three to 400 meters, then he's got to take that... that, that sight aspect into into his picture but so david cuts it in turns tight so does that ki-43 again remember anything you can do i can do better so he's cutting around starts the side side arc that would have been the perfect shot if anything for him for for why no 120 to actually shoot at david so if i was david i would be thinking wait this guy might be out of ammo because that was the per literally, when you're side on profile like that to an enemy plane, you're just asking, you're just begging to be killed. But David needed to turn in order to turn. 
he needed to roll his plane okay so and the guy didn't shoot now the guy is 400 and 500 meters away almost 600 now david's put this thing in a, in a really deep deep dive but uh-oh triple a uh-oh oh 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 shazbot if any of those hit him he's in serious serious doo-doo okay serious 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 doo-doo okay now bear in mind now that higher boot that enemy higher boost has done his job he's for, forced him forced david down he's forced david down now he broke off he broke off to put more energy in the bank while david is chasing down this other ki-43 remember marvelous there he is bear that in mind okay enemy f1m2 and a5m4 those are some serious dangerous planes problem is they don't have speed they've got turning ability over everything else they've got uh, um dog fighting ability but they've got a p36a and f2a and a hurricane to deal with but bear in mind what's behind him remember that ko 43 that was turning around to get energy in the bank david takes a couple of pot shots at his hayabusa minor damage now notice david didn't break left he broke right that's a smart thing to do you don't want to cut across giving your your exposing your cockpit and your potentially your fuel tanks to these planes behind him now if i was david at this point i would have engaged my right wing flaps forcing my right wing to come around sharply engaged my full negative rudder which would have turned my nose immediately around and i would have had a perfect shot at the underbelly of that ki-43 mark one now I, now that's what I would have done, okay? But if I would have done that, look where I would have been nose, nosing into. I would be going in the same direction as this KI-43, right into the mouth of all that AAA. So I would have actually probably been dead. Say, so I can admit my faults. That's what I would have done. I would have sacrificed myself to get one kill. That's not what you want. In a realistic battle, you want longevity. It's not about the kill count, guys. So David did the right thing there by breaking away Triple A is firing off preemptive rounds, trying to, to, to you know, shoo him away. But remember that KI-45, that KI-43 pilot? He's steadily climbing on David. David's even diving, and the guy is still catching him. Why? Because David's expelled his energy. The other guy hasn't. He's still got energy in the bank. Do you see? So, yeah, there's a high chance he's going to catch up to David, but there's also a high chance he's going to overshoot David. So, again, some people... Again, this is something I want to point out. A lot of people argue that a pilot who's got a height advantage on the target they're shooting at has all the advantages. That may be true in some cases, but in a lot of cases, and you're about to see, that's not the actual truth. Okay? So David starts to turn, sees him. Now bear in mind, this guy hasn't shot a single shell at David since he was on his tail. Yet now, all of a sudden, it's like the guy woke up and realized, oh, wait, this is my guns. Boom. Now, that white trail there tells me he's set for air ammunition. Again, I've, I've got every Japanese plane unlocked in War Thunder. I know the Japanese planes. I know the ammunition types. I know everything. That double white phosphorus trail right there tells me he's running air ammunition. And that is very, very bad for David. Okay. And I'm going to leave it in x-ray mode so you can see why. Now, David's engine's been hit. This guy is clearly is looking to disable David. David's now taking hits in his cooling system. Okay. His fuel tank, his secondary fuel tank's ruptured. His primary fuel tank is damaged. His secondary coolant is ruptured, but his primary coolant isn't. Okay. So that coolant that he's leaking is from his secondary tank. Know this. Okay, now what did I tell you about overshooting? See what I'm saying? David throttled down. He overshot him, but the other guy also throttled down when he realized, wait, I'm going to overshoot. Now, this is a very bad angle to be in for David, but it's a perfect angle to be in for his attacker, as you're about to see. More, more minor hits this time in the tower controls. Again, the guy's obviously clear looking to, to disable David. Okay. Now, David starts to do basic, simple maneuvers to avoid. Again, he's trying his best. His gun elevation sights are probably set for about 200 yards, 200 meters. 
the way this guy's flying. Again, now David starts to do the smart thing. Now, this Hayabusa pilot doesn't realize what David's doing. I do, okay? I'm the one that actually kind of told David how to do this. And you're about to learn a maneuver that was used by the Japanese, actually used by the Japanese against the Americans in World War II, okay? You're about to meet what's known as the corkscrew slingshot, okay? Now, we're going to let this play. Now, David starts to... Use his tail control, full negative camber, as you can see. Do you see the tail of the plane immediately wanting to tuck under? Takes a couple of pot shots, actually kills a KI-10. Good kill there, David. Well, again, not really worried about the other Hayabusa, knowing that he's not going to be able to get his guns turned around on him. See? The other Hayabusa can't do it now. Why? Because look how David's flying his plane. He's gliding his tail around. He's got full negative rear rudder which means the tail is wanting to come around his plane. Very similar to drifting. Literally, it is basically air drifting. That's what David's doing, he's air drifting. He's using the damage of the wing to actually cause the wing to droop, so he's not fighting the wing. He's actually letting the damage of the wing help his plane turn. Now bear in mind, the wing spurs of his plane are not damaged. Now, look at the distance David's about to get on that Hayabusa. Look at that. And it's climbing. And it's climbing. And it's climbing. Now, take this into account, guys. David is in a shallow climb. Less energy. Damaged engine. Less energy. That Hayabusa looks like his engine's perfectly fine. Okay, same plane. Yet, watch how far David leaves the guy. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. And you got your guns targeted for, for what? 200 meters? And I'm now 600 meters and change away from you? Didn't see that coming, did you? Same plane. The exact same plane. He did the corkscrew slingshot perfectly. David, 10 out of 10, my friend. Now, friendly hurricane. Come to his rescue. Nice one, Nuke. Thank you, Nuke. David's realized, wait, that guy's broke completely off of me. I've got two friendlies with me now. Now it's three on one. You want to take pot shots at me now? Now let me take pot shots at you. Now I don't know David's ammo count. I don't. But his plane is severely damaged. The engine, uh, it's, it's yellow. It's not red. It's not, you know, there's no black smoke because he's all out of coolant. But, the, you know, he's still got, he's, he's still got his, his main coolant. It's his secondary coolant that went out. Don't forget, everything in the right wing of the Hayabusa is the secondary. Okay? Secondary fuel tank, secondary coolant. Okay? Primaries are on the left. So, that would have been a really good shot in, like, arcade. But this isn't arcade. This is realistic. So, David waits. Couple of minor, minor hits on him. Ooh, ooh, careful friendly, careful friendly, careful friendly. Now, what did David just do in that turn? He throttled back. He throttled back on the turn. Not to, not to, to put less stress on the engine, but higher boosters turn faster, the slower they go. It's a complete oxymoron. Gets a couple of more minor hits on him. Again, David puts into a shallow dive, gains a little bit more energy in the bank. He's now sitting about 200 miles per hour and throttles back. Look how fast that tower turns. Even with a damaged fuselage and damaged tower controls, he's still whipping that sucker around. This is perfect Hayabusa flying, guys. This is what I do when I fly my Hayabusas. The Mark 1, the Mark 2, or the Mark 3. The Mark 3 bearing in mind, and in the drink he goes. Now, who got the kill? Who do you think got the kill? Oh, that's right, David did. Why? Because David severely damaged the guy's flight controls. Now... Thinking about it. No enemies nearby. Plane's really shot up. I need to land. I need to repair, but it's a carrier. Uh-oh. Is he going to do a jingles landing? Let's find out, shall we? I'm going to speed it up a little bit. Wait a minute. They're capturing A. A's being captured. A's got a runway. I'm going to go land on A. <laughs> That's what I would be thinking. Is he going to do that, though? Who knows? Mission objective complete. Yep, yep. Oh, sweet. Runway. There we go. So, David.
okay, we're just putting the plane into a nice shallow turn. We're going to speed this up a little bit. Okay, David comes around, sees the A5, A5 M4, dog fighting with so many friendlies, he doesn't even care. So he turns around and he heads home. He wants repairs. It could be low on ammo, it could be out on ammo, who knows? But it's actually the smart move. It's the right move to do now. So that's what he does. Now, I want to bring up his flight plans. Notice how he throttles back completely, puts it into a shallow dive, gets to about 300 miles per hour, and then glides her up. He does like a seagull effect. Uh, 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 so he's now solely just gliding here. No engine power whatsoever. Now he starts to push it to about 5%, 10%. Again, less stress on the engine. It's coming around, 260 miles per hour, perfect speed, perfect, starts to turn. So he loses about 10 miles per hour, 20 miles per hour in a turn, which is about average for a Hayabusa. Coming in, gliding beautifully about maybe 8% now. Now he's throttled it down to zero, maybe 1% if that. Banks right, banks left. Vapor trail on the wings. Now, another thing, uh, uh, um, guys. Vapor trail on your wings, that's the plane telling you you've met your aerodynamic resistance. Stop trying to turn. Okay, or you're going to snap your wings. Okay. So, I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. See, he's just wing scuffing it, as we, as we like to call it. Flaps, gears, comes in. Now, is he going to jingles it? Is he going to jingle it? Remember my wings damaged? Nope. Perfect landing. Absolutely perfect. Applies a little bit of speed to the brakes. Still going a little bit too fast, but he's got a lot more runway to deal with, so he doesn't care. Fires off his guns to slow down, and then finally turns. Comes to a stop. Rearms. Repairs. Back into the skies. Okay. Now. They're down to, I think, like one plane left. Uh, he's got a couple of friendlies who've landed in repair. Oh, crap. KI-43. Remember that? That guy, Marvelous, I told you to re I remember about? Here he is. Okay, friendly triple A's firing at him, lighting him up. This guy he, he either believes in the Japanese very honorable, or he's just seriously got a hard-on for one of those guys on the runway. It could even be David. Who knows? Triple A starts firing at his position. Starts firing, starts firing. Oh, he gets lit up. He's on fire. David ninjas the kill. Good kill, David. In the drink he goes. That was the last pilot. That was the last plane. They run out of tickets. GG. GG. Victory shots. Don't blame you, David. Don't blame you. So, long story short, David shoots down three planes. One, uh, 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 one being an actual, you know, two of them being higher boosters, the third one being a Ki-10. If there is anything I would have done differently, I apart from that one corkscrew maneuver I, I spoke to you about earlier, I really don't see it. I don't. He did a perfect game, flew perfect. Uh, 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 you know, he he he's. He needs to. I'm not saying he need, need needs to master trigger control. But, again, it's a higher booster. Have fun. Show the way. It's all good. You might get a lucky shot or two. Still, guys, I hope you enjoyed this part of the replay. And I'll see you in the next, re next, next one. Hi, guys. We are back with another replay. And, of course, this is, this is DDG. Now, David wanted to point out that this replay isn't that long. So, what we're going to do here is we are going to speed up the replay a wee bit. So we're going to let him fly. Now, in this replay, he did say it was a bit of a crapshoot. But still, we're going to do this. As you can see, he's flying the British Hurricane Mark IV. And, of course, he is flying against the uh, Axis. So it is j both Japanese and German. And, of course, his first target is a German Duo 17Z. So it's going to line up a couple of shots, ranging shots. Oh, he actually hit him in the wing. His first kill. GG. Now, again, remember what I was telling you about the uh, uh, 
about the uh, trail trail vape vapor edge. Now there's an enemy TBD over there going for the uh, naval targets. He's doing the right thing. We've got an enemy Ki-10 apply an I-153 and a PBY with a high cool 51 and a D3A1. So they've got a lot of uh, um, um, biplane slash monoplanes. Hmm. So uh, this should be a very interesting game. So of course, you know, it, it looks like a lot of them are, are split up, which is a. I really wouldn't advise doing this again. Hurricanes are 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 wolf pack planes. They like to go well with other other mark uh, mark fours. Same as high boosters. High boosters are not wolf, uh, lone wolves. They work better in pack. They they actually fly better in packs. Now, this high call one one two is getting on a perfect angle on this poor little he fifty one who doesn't even see the guy until it's too late. Boom 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 boom. See you later, alligator. Now. There's that I-153, keep an eye on him. Now he's trying to, I don't know what he's doing. Okay, David sees a KI-10. Oh, goodbye KI-10. That was a lovely kill. Triple A's now letting off on, on David. No hits, no hits. They're just giving his general present. Oh, hello Catalina. Om nom 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 nom. Perfect line up on him. Oh, oh, there goes his tail controls. Oh, goodbye, Miss Molly. Good night. Now, that that approach on that Catalina was perfect. Side gunners couldn't get to him. Only the nose gunner. And he's only got one browning. Side gunners have duels. Perfect approach. Had perfect shots on the engine, the fuel tanks, the pilot. Perfect angle. Perfect approach. Couldn't fault it. So, now, that's three kills like that. Let's see if you can get any more, shall we? Now, David's looking around for some targets. I purposely would have gone for that BV-1 all the way over there. Because that's a, that's a rat's nest. That That's a furball waiting to happen right there. Granted, there's two friendlies, but still... Friendlies in that sort of scenario could be as more deadly than, than than allies. And notice that his Hurricane Mark One doesn't carry the rocket pods; it's actually carrying the Hasbo uh, 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 30 mils. Sorry, uh, the uh, 40 mils. Sorry. And as you can see, uh, the G50's got the same idea. He's going for that. Now, what did I tell you? What did I tell you? Boom! They've already nailed one of those so-called allies. The other one's flown off while this Heiko 51's limping home. And that I-153 smells blood in the water. I would have swiped it now because he's concentrated. He's totally target fixated on that 51. I'll do, I'm, I would do the exact same thing what David's doing here. Line up on that 153. Aim for the leading wing, wing tip ledge. Pat, pat, pat. Bye bye wings. You didn't need those, did you? So let's see what David does here. Oh, 153 smart. He saw David coming. Tucks in real tight. I would have barrel rolled right just like this oh no he's going straight who's he going after a hike of 112 huh? he's thinking screw it i ain't stopping on you smart move got it in a shallow dive gaining a little bit of energy as he's speed as he's going let's keep an eye on that uh by, oh that biplane oh oh he's got oh oh that hike 51 is still alive somehow don't know how okay perfect approach trip oh 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 sneaky high call Sneaky high call. Nice maneuver. He saw David coming and decided to duck under him, knowing that David won't be able to get his guns down. Of course, now the AAA is going to start lighting David up. This is not good. AAA is giving his position away like a strobe beacon. Of course, now the high call 112 can try and turn around, but he ain't going to catch David. David's got too much speed. He's been, David got hit by AAA. Minor damage. Didn't even damage the uh, exterior of the plane. Puts it in a shallow dive, gains some speed, pulls away. Smart maneuver. Smart, smart, smart maneuver. He's pulling away from all the planes. I don't think he sees the target. No, he doesn't. So we're going to speed this up a wee bit. So, as you can see, he's leading away. Now, David's decided to turn around and fight his opponents instead of wanting to run away like a coward. Now, what target would you go for? Would you go for the high call? Who's in the middle of an arc turn, or would you go for the the I one three five three down below? He's going for the one five three, one five three, and him going nose up, nose up, nose up. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win? Ooh, minor 
surface control damage and his engine on David. Of course, now the 153's got David where he wants him in a, and it's in a turn fight. Heiko 112 is now on his six. That's two enemies on one. Now, we saw how David dealt with the Hayabusa earlier. Can he do the same here? Can he? Who knows? Who knows? Okay, they're both firing on him. Oh, there goes his wing. Oh, GG. GG. Good kill. Good kill there, Heikel. You deserve that kill. Now, what did David do wrong? Well, first things first, I would have gained a little bit more, more speed, more distance between myself and them. I would have purposely drugged them out. That way, friendlies can come up behind them on their six and deal with them. Remember, in realistic, it's a team effort, not a single lone wolf. But David did everything right. He took out the Catalina perfectly. He took out that uh, uh, um, KI, KI-2 perfectly. He took out that uh, 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 Duo 17Z perfectly. Perfect shots. The Hurricane Mark IV, unlike its predecessors, doesn't like to turn. And when it does, it... it Gripes, it moans, it whines, it it it, it it's like it, it's like tr being driven to school by your grandparents, okay? The grandfather's always when I was in the war, and the grandma's like, oh shut up, Henry, you know, literally. The guns are saying when I was in the war, you know, killing people, mostly your brain cells, and when you try to turn the plane, that's when grandma says, oh shut up, Henry, that's you trying to turn the damn plane, but. Honestly, I would treat it more of a slow boom and zoomer, uh, which is kind of oxymoron, but that's what I would do. I would I would try and treat it more of a, as a slow boom and zoomer than anything else. Again, guys, this has been a replay roundup, the very last one of 2015. I hope you enjoy it. I've enjoyed watching these replays. If you want to send me a replay, please send an email to replayroundup at gmail.com. Link to that will be in the video description, and I'll also put an annotation here somewhere uh, again guys thank you to dust david games at team ddg for sending me these awesome replays thank you david i greatly appreciate it it's an amazing replays that you show me beautiful see it shows the diversity of some players what you've learned in one nation doesn't necessarily apply to another you've got to think uh, uh, about the plane's designation what it was designed for did it actually serve that purpose and do that role well? What su what what su what was the more superior plane to it uh, on both your 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 net in your nation and an enemy nation? For example, why is there like twenty seven different types of Spitfire? You know, guys, it doesn't hurt to do a little bit of reading. Go to your local library; they've got tons of books on aviation of World War Two, on tanks of World War Two, on naval ships of World War Two. Go out, read a book. Don't just stay indoors all day, guys. Seriously, go read a book, okay? I, I've got tons of books. I've got tons uh, uh, of autobiographies of German tank commanders, British tank commanders, uh, uh, German uh, 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 Luftwaffe pilots, uh, RAF fighter pilots, American fighter pilots, uh, uh, um, you name it. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the William Gurney uh, autobiography to come out. He he sadly w uh, was the second. He recently sadly passed away. Here um, they based um, the TV show Saints and Soldiers on William Gurney's life and stuff. And and I'm I'm a huge fan of the sh TV show. My good God, the movies and everything else. Again, guys, um, thanks for watching the replay roundup. Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Seasons Greetings, and all that other fun stuff to you all. And uh, I'll see you all in 2016 with a new replay roundup and fingers crossed hopefully your replay will get featured and if it does trust me i do give credits where credits are due anyway my name is danny deceptive cobras monahan i am out and i like to end every single one of my replays and every single one of my videos with stay safe have fun keep your shows flying keep your enemies dying your cobra commander is out and i'll see you guys in the next one my friends Morning around of course, the biggest weakness is the upper ma uh, uh, the upper uh, uh, chassis, with it only being 16 millimeters. So you got to be careful of artillery, even light artillery, will will wreck you. You have to be careful of HE as well, because HE will wreck you. Um, this isn't spaced armor, unfortunately. So don't give your opponents your sides if you if you can't you know if you 
can't help it. Same as the tart. Tart's not really that strong, but it does have some sort of angling to it, 25 degree angling. So, you know, unless you're going down the hill with, you know, 